There we go. We got our international audiences now here. So they will they will see you through Facebook. We have uh, UStream Live is the fa is the international uh, hookup. Uh, we'll be going to um, Vimeo um, and uh, Twitter, I believe. Their Twitter live stuff. And then after that, we go to YouTube, post it on YouTube and, and other platforms after that. Um, so here we go with the formal stuff. You got the luxury of not having to put the headphones on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I have to worry about what it does to my hair, that's for sure. <laughs> So All right, well, welcome, everybody. This is th uh, 360 Performance Talk. I'm your host, Lowell Whiteman, at KUHSDenver.com in wonderful North Glen, Colorado. And in the background, you see the, the wonderful, smiling face of Serena Williams. And um, and we're showing that because that that's the, kind of the intro message for our show. Serena, as everybody knows, is an outstanding female athlete, has uh, won any number of tournaments all over the world, uh, Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, uh, on clay court as well as grass and, and uh, hard courts. Without a doubt, she's a performer. She's an elite performer, as is my guest for today, who I'll introduce formally here in just a second, Crystal Rose Harvey. Uh, but I want to make sure that we, we really get the essence of what we're trying to do today. And it's going to be more, listen up, guys, it's more for you than it is the women I'm going to reference or the woman I'm going to talk to. They are the messengers we have to listen to. Because quite honestly, as I tell my son, and I want him to share with my grandsons, men are stupid. You know, just, just a simple statement, really cuts right to it. And here's what I mean in a serious way. We haven't been socially educated well enough to understand how we should behave uh, with women, with girls. Um, and, and if that were the case of us being trained properly, socialized at a level that's balanced and not just tilted towards masculinity versus femininity, we probably wouldn't have the problems we're having in the discussions that are going on right now in Washington, D.C., as it relates to the Kavanaugh hearings uh, in, in an effort to um, get another Supreme Court justice uh, sitting, sitting on the bench because he wasn't educated properly back in the 80s and 90s um, to be a young man who really was understanding of who he was so he could then project that goodness and that greatness to anybody he met, in particular uh, Dr. Ford. So that's what we're trying to do is educate men through the voices of women, powerful women, women who have stood on podiums. And by the way, comedy stages, I discovered... So without any further ado, my first guest and wonderful person um, is, a, is a former IFBB bikini pro uh, and a 2014 Olympian. Uh, she also is a health uh, lifestylist and specialist. She's the co-founder of My Healthy Lifestyle Community. Uh, this is where she can help others build a healthy lifestyle for themselves. That goes without saying that she's an entrepreneur. Just, I mean, for goodness sakes, look at that face. Face of an entrepreneur. Um, and a network marketing professional. She's currently involved in two very important, no, no, three, three very important things. The first one being pregnant and becoming a mom for the first time. The second most important thing is she's currently working on a book about women, a beauty, and body image, which she intends to complete this year. Because, of course, you're going to have all kinds of time on your hands, just rocking this little person, you know, and, and yeah, plenty of time on your hands. <laughs> and third, she's the wife of a wonderful trainer and, and partner. Um, and, oh, she, uh, uh, Thanks. I, I'm trying to pronounce it in my head. I'm spelling it out. T-H-I-A-G-O. -T okay, Tiago. <laughs> Tiago. Oh, that's right, with the T-H. It's... Oh. Uh, and I, I have no excuses because I've known him long enough I should be able to you know, say his name without hesitation. But when they get my brain spelling and seeing it at the same time, I just flip out. So Crystal Rose Harvey, thank you so much for being with me this morning on Split Screen Facebook Live. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you're such a, a delight to be around. So we, we know that 
We're talking about power on the podium. That's our theme today, about women and feminine power uh, and, and, and where, where we need to position that in our lifestyle. And from a sports psychologist standpoint, I deal with it all the time, and usually in an adverse situation. Um, a woman has a difficulty communicating with a coach because the coach is pushing his masculinity uh, too aggressively and, and doesn't even know it, doesn't even know it. And as I say that, we see in the background Serena Lynn just throwing a racket into the court <laughs> and, and breaking it. Um, and that's a good segue into um, people constantly say, coaches, I should say people, I hear coaches say, stop playing like a girl. You're being, you're being so emotional. I go, okay, and what do you mean by that? So those are some things I want to I want to talk about with Crystal and, and share with you all. There's also I want to I want to talk about those women who have really fought the odds. In addition to Serena, as well as yourself, Crystal, and getting where you've gotten in your, your life a successful. But there's people like Sarah Thomas, the first female NFL referee. First, uh, there's a great picture from last week uh, football game where she is like nose to nose with Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots. And Bill's face is like, it's like the dad who's pissed at his, at his daughter. It's like, he's like, like, are you really telling me that? Really? That's what you're telling me? And it's just, it's an epic picture. And, you know, she's got her hair tucked up underneath her hat. And, you know, she's, there's, there's obvious signs you can tell it's not a male form. It's a female referee. Um, in addition to Sarah, there's also people like, uh, Becky Hammond, who is a CSU graduate, played basketball at, at CSU. Uh, Becky has made a name for herself as being a high-performance Olympic athlete in women's basketball, uh, as well as a professional WNBA championship basketball player. Uh, but of note, though, she was the first woman to coach men at the pro level with the San Antonio Spurs. So with those examples, along with my, my guest today, uh, Crystal Rose Harvey, we're going to talk about... What's going on? Female power. It's there, but it seems like there's constant just butting of heads. So, Crystal, in your experiences as a high-performance person, do, what kind of things did you confront as a, as a female athlete in, in your training regimen and getting prepared for delivering those wonderful uh, appearances on stage and in, in your bikini contests and, and competitions? As an Olympian, I mean, you had your test, didn't you? You had your, your I mean, there were got to be some stuff in, in your way every once in a while. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I don't know that my my skills were necessarily. I felt because I was a woman, I was experiencing more confrontation or difficulties. Uh, but I mean, there might have been a few things that were on my mind that maybe weren't on. The man's mind so much, and of course, I can only speak from my experience. I think you know everyone is definitely different. Uh, I know something that was on my mind a lot was, um, am I messing up my body? You know, am I going to be able to get pregnant someday? Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think men can have fertility issues from being high performance athletes, um, and I don't know how much how much men think about that though. Um, you know, I think that that was really big in my mind, so I'd say that was something that I, I battled with. And I think also, and I can only speak, you know, for the, the bodybuilding industry, because that's the industry that I know and that I experienced personally, uh, but there's so much sexuality, you know, and I remember being brand new and, and you know, being told I needed to flirt with the judges or I needed to, um, be sexy and sassy, and um, you know, really none of that stuff worked for me. <laughs> what worked for me was being myself. And when I'm teaching stage presentation, I'm really trying to help women express who they need to work, not to be sexy or flirty or, or weak at a judge or yeah. any of those things. But those things are definitely there. I don't, I don't know how much that's there for for men, you know. Uh, you know, and even off the back side of that too, it's just kind of, um, you know, my purpose for doing it was, was the goal. It was getting on the stage. It was working 
started with this, um, you know, all of those things. It really was about the sexy or sexuality for me, but I did find myself in a lot of situations where I felt like I had to be a certain way because of, you know, the, that side of the industry. Did, so did you? Definitely, um, you know, many photographers that came into the space. And I was so young when I started. I was in my early 20s, so very impressionable. And I definitely had myself in some uncomfortable situations that now, looking back, I would never be in now. Um, but then, I was still finding myself. You know, so I think that um, the, the sexuality is definitely one of the, the tough things I think women might deal with a little bit more than men. So with those experiences and the awareness you had about those kind of parameters that people ask you to try to participate in, did you start each day different? I mean, not differently, but what, what were some of the things you had to put in your head, your your thinking process to get ready for a day of training or get ready for a day of competition? Uh, it, it had, I mean, it's got to be a little different than God. I mean, I, look, at, I ever winked at a referee. That's for darn sure. If I did, it wouldn't be taken the same way as you. Um, and that in, it, that in itself is a, a message to our society uh, because we also have the other other orientations to think about. I mean, if if we're gonna if we're gonna be truly just organic and real about sexuality, body image, uh, our gender, and the differences we bring to the table just naturally from a physiological standpoint, why why sh why couldn't a young man wink at a referee? You know, I mean. Does, I've never seen a bodybuilder, and I've not been to many bodybuilding competitions, but I've been to a few. Not many of them are focused on the judges. <laughs> They're focused on the lift and the pose and what have you. So right, right. What, what, what kind of things went through your mind in getting ready for a competition? You know, for me, it was just a good thing. There, there was a lot of You know, I, I did maintain a digital to myself, but it did come with a competition. So I didn't let that change how I showed up on stage. Although I do think a lot of women do, and their coaches do that. that um, for me, it was more of a hopelessness. And it's that uh, well, I'm not participating in these, you know. So it, it's almost like uh, just strengthening my mind in a sense of staying true to who I was. Yeah. You know, share the base of the boys. So I don't think necessarily my training was different. It's more of what I needed to put out of my mind every day and not focus on that um, that was maybe a little different experience. So Crystal then in, in that pro I mean you're getting observed during workouts, you're working in, in a gym with weights with other men there and other women there. Um what did you have to do that you thought might have been different than men to earn other competitors' respect? That you're legit. That it has nothing to do with me as a female. I'm legit, and here's why. Yeah, did you feel like you had to lift more or be there earlier or... Yeah. So it it sounds like we you're saying to me is that is when you you when you focused in on those very found foundational uh, concepts, what we run businesses on, what we 
we train athletes to do, a plan, you know, coming to the table with a mindset that's focused and that you're, you're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about me. What, what do I need to do? And less about what's around you that seem to keep, well, obviously your record proves it. I mean, 2014 Olympian and you've had successes uh, along the line and now as a businesswoman, an entrepreneur. Uh, so those, those particular uh, elements of performance have paid off for you. What, can, what kind of advice would you give young women coming into any vocation, whether it be athletic or, or business, what would you say to them about uh, their, their mind, the mindset going into any task when they're confronted, when they face that, that large challenge that, that may come from any source, be it man, woman, whatever? Um, did, did, you, did you learn any lessons about what worked best in adapting and adjusting that were challenging your mindset? Yeah, it did, and, and it raised some other questions too about uh, when. Look, at, I, one of my favorite movies is *League of Their Own*. Tom Hanks and the girls playing baseball, women in baseball during World War II, because men were at war. And he said in in the game, an epic line: "They're still crying in baseball," and because one of the girls was was emotionally engaged in the game. She got put out of it, and and, and, Tom, and she starts crying. And Tom Hanks, the coach who didn't want to be there coaching women. He considered himself a much higher at a higher plane. He looked at and looked at her face, and he was <laughs> another backdrop for the movie. You haven't seen it. I hope you have. The woman he's talking to is crying. He let her have her son in the dugout as one of the bat boys. So he's already compromised himself as a guy, you know, letting into his feminine side. And then she starts crying, and he just had enough. He just said, "There's no crying in baseball. You don't, you don't cry in baseball." So as I say that. He, your comments reminded me not only of that, but also it, is there is there a different level of preparedness, energy, and dynamics for women who are who are being challenged by men? I mean, for example, have you if you've ever had a, a moment where you've been challenged by a male competitor or male pers a person in the gym that was questioning your your right to be in the gym as a woman? You know, because women can't lift as much as me. You know, why are you even here? Go to your own your own gym. Have you ever been confronted that way? And if you have, how did you handle it? You know, the only time I've really been challenged by that is when it was my own fear when I very first started walking me out. I remember I would drive up to the gym. If it was cold outside, I would drive away, right? And then there was a time that I would. And I would see the weights, right? And then I would see the set notes. And for the most part, I would see I had it in my mind that the weights are for the men and cardio is for the you know? And so I would avoid that area. 
I was still there. But truly, when I really started going into that tech system, I never had a man or, or anyone for that matter tell me I had to walk through there so we didn't belong in that place. That feeling and fear, that, that gender, um, I guess is what I would call it. So how did you, how did you, ever, did you just keep trying because you had a plan? Did you just keep fighting against that urge to not go in and eventually? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And developing my own skills. Um, we're going to take a, a brief, com not commercial break, but a kind of a self-indulgent break just for a second. Um, and, and I want to pick up on that remark you made about uh, the overcoming it, you know, and what what people or things helped you to overcome that hesitation to walk in the gym um, and, and build that confidence you talked about. Because I think I mean, I, I think I know in talking to the young women and men that I deal with on a routine basis in athletics primarily, uh, confidence um, is many times the, the one thing that we focus on, we need to focus on the most. So as I say that, um, I want to point out again to everybody, we have Germ Block, that's one of my, my folks here, Germ Block, it's backwards, by the way, in Facebook. <laughs> so Germ Block, it's an antibacterial hand cleanser. So as a new mom, you might want to check this out. This is not alcohol-based. So it doesn't dry out your skin. And it has wipes and all. So this is one of my clients. Uh, and the other part of that is, I don't, know if, I don't know if I've talked to you about this is one of my clients, Empower, CBD oil. Not THC, but CBD. And for, you know, old guys like me, I've got, I just put some on this morning. This is the oil. This is the spa oil. I love this um, because of the big applicator ball on the top. It rolls on really nice. It's as their as their slogan says, put it where it hurts. Um, and what's nice about their formula is it doesn't feel greasy or like a balm, like an analgesic. It's got some great herbs in it. Her secret recipe is there. They just came out with a lotion. My uh, wife just discovered she went to uh, Ohio. and got a mosquito bite. You know we don't have a lot of mosquitoes out here, so she had a mosquito bite, and she had the lotion with her. And she put the lotion on the mosquito bite. And for some reason, the CBD diminished that inflammation on the mosquito ball. And it didn't itch as much. So I was like, there's a new application for it. Um, so I, I started putting the lotion, like, here's my vanity under my eyes. It's allergy season for me. So I get the raccoon eyes and the puffiness under my eyes. So I put the CBD lotion on there and it, it worked. It's an inflammation. So I am so all over empowered. It's empowerbodycare.com is their website. You can buy CBD oils and have them shipped to you because it's not illegal. It doesn't have the hypotro or the uh, psychotropic element to it, the THC. And uh, Germ Block, you can get this on Amazon, amazon.com, or you can go to their website, avalphavictorcare.com. Um, really good stuff. Really, really good stuff, especially for young kids. Because the alcohol tends to dry out that sensitive skin pretty quickly, and that's not a good thing. Um, so there we have it. So picking up, we're on a segment number two, uh, which is about uh, skills. And what I, what, I, what I mean by skills, everybody, skills are things like the skill of meditating, the skill of breathing, uh, skills like your nutritional habits and your ability to feed your body, that skill. Because it's the skills you use to bring the mindset forward to enhance the mindset, keep the mindset always around you that's optimal for you being your best. Now, I know this about Crystal. 
she's a, a foodie but a nutcase about the nutritional value of food. So as a, as a soon-to-be mom, are you going to just like overwhelm this kid with like nutritional supplements and certain lotions and milk, so, you know, all, I, mean, I, I don't know if I want to see what's going to happen to this child with all the, the stuff that's going to be around them. It's going to be great, but tell me, tell me where does food and nutritional value work with you in maintaining a strong mindset for you? Uh, just a little bit here and there, but you're you're good. It's all good. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you blend the nutritional uh, components with body image uh, because I have one of the top 10, maybe even top five issues I deal with with my women's, women athletes is what a coach says about their body image and not necessarily directly. And yet, they're, in figurative terms, they're feeding that body image by the nutritional plan the coach selects for the team. And doesn't consider that that plan impacts what that body image is, and then they make negative remarks about it. So the player goes, wait a minute, you're feeding me this stuff that causes the image to be created that you're now making comments, negative comments about. So male coaches in particular don't understand the connection, the nutritional value and how it relates to body image, which then comes back to your point earlier about people having these negative choices. It's good or it's bad. It's fuel, just like breathing. you got to breathe to bring oxygen in to burn the fuel 
So if we're not properly doing that, um, it, it's going to be kind of self-defeating and, and very inefficient. Uh, the other piece for me is identifying the athlete's desires. What, what, what do you want? Do you like pancakes? Oh, that's awesome. Well, we don't have pancakes that often, but we could do this at the training table or we could do that. Um, too often I get the conflicts of the, the smoothie bar in the uh, weight room. And nobody ever asks, do you like smoothies? Would you like to have a liquefied meal? <laughs> and for some people, that's counterintuitive. Drinking their daily nutrition in a jar is not, it's not part of their, how they were raised. It's, you know, give me a plate, give me a buffet line, let me go. Um, so even though smoothies are kind of vogue, we don't, we don't ask. Uh, and especially with the women. Because women uh, tend to be, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to step into a black hole here. It's something I've learned from experience that women are better planners. And in fact, psychologically, their brains develop amygdala sooner, which is the area where planning and strategic thinking goes on. So women own it. Now, we socially have done things to that reality that aren't right. Because eventually men do catch up. They become better planners in their late teens and early 20s where, where females tend to have the medulla is matured more in their teens right around uh, pubescence. Um, so that's why we socially say, oh, give it to the girls. They're planners. Let them do it. Well, that's where we've socially made a mistake. Uh, just because they are better at thinking through planning processes doesn't mean they're the ones we always give the plans to for the party or they're not, they shouldn't always be the ones we go to to, to get insights on, on dating. Uh, Cause I know what my fair share of young men that uh, are pretty good planners themselves. My, my point here is, is that there are misconceptions that cause the negativism. And so I want to, I'm going to ask you this question then uh, Crystal about uh, skills that are both the nutritional side of things and the, you know, how do you feel? Are there certain things that women should pay attention to nutritionally that are unique to women as far as whether it's minerals or protein or carbohydrates? I mean, I, obviously, you're at a different stage in your life right now, so your nutritional highlights are more about feeding two, not just one. But when you were training, are there certain things that you, you knew that women should know this? about their nutritional value and how it makes them feel? You know, I, I think that, that my sport specifically, um, there were a lot of different drugs available yep. that um, really bring on more testosterone, um, you know, it makes it a little easier to retain muscle and all of those things. Um, tons of different sorts of genetics, you know, fat burn, this and that. And, you know, when I see something on a bottle that's, Warning me to cycle off in four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, that was a little scary for me. So um, I was very particular with what I was putting into my body. So I think for, for women, especially um, when you're playing with your testosterone and those types of things, um, to be really aware of the big picture and, and looking beyond your, your goal right now. Because what we do to our bodies right now might make it more difficult for our bodies to maintain themselves yeah. years, down, years down the road. And uh, really looking at, okay, um, is this the right mind frame training that this company wants me to um, promote actually makes me feel good? You know, for me, I have a lot of different companies sending me a ton of free products. You know, oh, we posted about this, we posted about that. And, you know, it's first, when I was first starting out, it was just a tear in my body. And I actually would, I would drink this free workout or that free workout. And, and now I'm so much more aware of, like, the dyes and the pink sugars and all these yep. different chemicals that go into these things. And I actually took a friend to the cancer treatment facility a few years back. And that kind of light bulb really turned on for me. Because it was like the DMV. Like a revolving door. There were so many people coming into the treatment. Yeah. And I, I realized a deep fear within myself that I'm, I'm going to get sick someday because everybody gets sick. I was a believer by that. 
And then I started exploring, well, you know, I'm fit. Like, I, I spent hours on my body over seven days a week. I'm fit. I look at the part. Why don't I have to feel good? Right? Why don't I have to feel good? And my whole perspective shifted. The way I was eating and coaching myself shifted. The way I was eating and coaching others shifted. And now I, I think supplements can be amazing. I feel like there are so many out there that are very toxic for our bodies. So, again, I think really tuning in with how do I feel when I take this product? You know, is, is this product um, a deep with product or is it a deep to process? Because, you know, supplements for me, I look at them as, you know, I have those issues. And I can probably catch fish with my bare hands. And uh, I, I might find some success. But if I want to feed a family quickly, why would I not take a pool or a net and catch more fish, right? And I think that that's what supplements can do for us. Supplements can really enhance our results and really help us move towards goals as long as we are actually moving towards that goal. And if it's a supplement that, uh, for one, it's, it's creating crazy results and very, very quickly, um, I would be aware of that because if your body's not doing it, then you don't get to keep that. You know, if you have to take a break from your life to get the results you want, you're not going to probably get to keep those results. And, and so I would just say, as a woman, really pay attention to your body, pay attention to diet and, and fake sugar and, and those types of things. Really pay attention to how you feel when you ingest something. And I think I can think of one product that is overwhelmingly wonderful for any person, male or female, I'd say collagen. Collagen is an amazing product. That's, they're not all created equal. And I'll say now that I've been to, I, I've taken my foot off the brakes on a couple of things. I had caffeine and different things. I mean, I, I still take a lot of my supplements that I was, and they are CPC. Um, but my liquid collagen, I've actually doubled my dosage. And uh, so women, collagen will be your best friend. So when, when you've looked at targeting the supplements that you wanted to take, did you get a medical, a medical test of your chemistry to know where you might have deficiencies, or was it more of a guessing game as to how you felt and then you tried different things? So there are a lot of different blood tests available. There are different clinics that can test where your different levels are. Also, we aware of that there are different levels that you can Yeah. But you're, you're talking about a great segue to our next segment, which is about mental conditioning. And mental conditioning in my, in my world means what are the, what, what's the environment doing to me? I've got my mindset. I've got my skills. I'm putting that together. And when I walk into an environment, am I, am I feeling, am I feeling good about it? Um, and so when, when you combine nutrition, uh, breathing techniques, visualization, all those mindset tools, 
along with, um, I'm sorry, all of those skill tools, along with the mindset that you bring to, to the table that defines who you are. Like you said, you were on a journey. You discovered all these different things about nutrition. You discovered things about your yourself and how you uh, approached a gym, went into a gym, dealt with the environment of the gym. Um, so let me let me take you back a few years then. When you walked into a gym and you started your workout at the gym you, you, you like to, to hang out at, were there, like for me, when I, I, I see jugs of stuff. <laughs> now the jugs are getting bigger. And in some cases, I see... I see men with like these little little synthetic coolers. <laughs> it's like they should have a, 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 a service dog with a vest on to carry all their stuff. Uh, that the nutritional side of things has gotten so crazy, and yet they don't want to be out of the gym, so they create these new methods. And I, I told one of my, my football players in the offseason, I said, that's a distraction. If you're not ready to lift when you come in, if you haven't had all the stuff you need to take, before you come in, why are you here? Because your your mind is not, your mindset's not been nurtured with the skills that I've showed you to perform mentally. Your mental condition is not right. It's 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 just out of balance. So have you ever experienced that where you're so into the accoutrements and making sure you had all the jars and jugs of stuff? Uh, I I've got guys that pay more attention to what their leotards are and their torn t-shirts than they do about. The actual lift itself. Uh, I'm sorry, I digress. <laughs> so my question, my question is about how important has it been to you to pay attention to the environment that you're in in order to excel at your craft? How important has it been for me to pay attention to the environment that I'm in? Yeah. Um, Yep. And um, definitely, also, it's full of a lot of people seeking significance, seeking identity, and a lot of, um, you know, the leotards or the, the jumps of things that you are not mentioning seeing in the gym. Um, I think a lot of that is, is to appear to appear a certain way, you know, and, and it's more of like, somebody said I should take this, it's like, cool for me to be taking this, I'm going to be taking this out of this cup that has this label on it and all of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that um, a lot of those things are, are, at least I can speak for myself and when I first started out, like, I would show up to the gym and I would sometimes be really excited to be there, and sometimes I would be really resisting being there. Because I was there so much. Yeah. And, you know, there are times you just feel dead tired, you know. But when you're out for a goal and then, then you have your eye on where you're going, you do things even when you don't want to do them. And sometimes having those extra few minutes to shake up my pre workout when I got to the gym would almost feel like rubbing up the engine, you know. And uh, I, I think that's what those are for, for a lot of people. It's almost a comfort, a routine they provide mm -hmm. comfort maybe an uncomfortable environment that they're walking into. Um, and, and really, it's just a matter of uh, in those situations when you're in the distractions, um, which you, you think show up even outside sports, you know, it's like I can think of a million reasons why I'm not going to go right today, <laughs> you know, but I keep my mind on the goal. Yeah. And as humans, I, I think this, right, because we have all these self-value um, things in our subconscious or we have all these um, and really, if we just do the thing that we know is going to get us where we need to go, that's ultimately all we need to focus on. And the other things can be distractions. Some some things are, are super valuable that we can offer. I mean, I know when I'm doing cardio, right? I mean, there's this crazy calorie deficit doing insane cardio. Um, you know. And like maybe 25 grams of carbs a day during my my Olympia preparation. A lot of it is the preparations. But that just felt like I couldn't function physically without a little help from something, you know. And that's really what some of those supplements did for me. Is they would get me through my workout when my body was ready to check out. There were times, a couple times, I almost fainted. So you know, on the set. So um, when when you were. Just pushing so hard. 
when you're looking at those distractions, was there was there a di- particular distraction that seemed to be arising that was the one that you would go, oh my God, I hope this doesn't happen. I, you know, it's it's one of those challenges, those distractions that is could be a constant, and you just go, I don't I don't want this to happen <laughs> because it's going to get me. Now I know as it's playing in the background here is your 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 introduction to improv at the improv, and you talk about you talk about some of those distractions. And how, and in a funny way, in a fun way, and and how you as a person um, dealt with, you know, the the images of others around you. But I'm asking you about: was there a particular challenge, a particular distraction that was the most challenging and routine? Yeah. yeah. So you've spoken to a lot of young women that wanted to, that have and or want to get into the bikini competitions at the pro level. What, what have they said to you has been their, their strongest obstacles that they've had to confront to get through? Yeah. 
get up with their civic that they had when they started, or or even worse, like maybe a a, a car that's you know fifteen years older. Yeah. So. Oh, whoa. I just lost service. Just lost service. Well, okay. Technical issue. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna work on that real quick and get that fixed as quickly as we can. Um, and we're gonna do it by switching to a different device. I think we can. Yes. I think so. And we're going to go Facebook Live on the good old iPad. Because we just lost. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, stick with me, viewers out there. We got technical difficulties. We're going to handle them and move on. It's awesome. It's an awesome day on the show. All right. That's assuming I can get it. All right, everybody, here I am. Let's see if we can get... Uh, let's see. Crystal, where are you? I'm going to get her back, people. So as we're doing that, let's just take a little bit of a break. I forgot to tell everybody about uh, Empower Body Oil Lotion um, as it relates to my discount. I have a discount for you guys. It's LW010. So order it on EmpowerBodyCare.com uh, uh, to get there. So do I have you back, Crystal? Well, I do. I, there was a, and I had an over, for some reason my phone overheated. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it didn't start on fire though. That's good. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's a lot of hot information, I guess. Well, one could say, you know, it's a lot of hot air, you know, just <laughs> letting it out there. Um, you know, I want, before I forget it, I was, I was totally taken aback when I saw the YouTube film of you on improv. That was, that was just, I'm going, this is the young woman that I, when I first met her, we talked about anxiety and stage presence and, and the stressors that that brings. And here she is, I'm seeing her on video um, at the improv. And, you know, this is my natural color of my lips, too. Just, say, just saying. <laughs> That's just proof to you that I listened to the show. I, I, I actually listened. <laughs> yeah, the opening. I, that's, all, that's all it took. And, you know, I think, look, at I think from the, the standpoint of what we talked about before we got cut off there about body image and what, what young women are trying to look for, I, I want to hear more from you about the how you relate your body image to help release women, and, and not just women, young girls, females, from this pressure about having to be a certain way in, instead of just finding out who am I, why am I important? Um, and look, you know you've got a natural platform for it. You worked hard to get the body, or to maintain the body you have. You, you are a conscientious uh, a fashion person, nutritionist, and, and so on. So you have a comic platform to be self-deprecating in a positive way because that's what all comedians are. They beat themselves up. 
to have other people laugh. And um, I, I want to hear you say more of that because I think there's a great message for young women and girls uh, with that message. Oh, so as I say that, um, we're in our last we're in our last segment, uh, which is about performance uh, results, and that's different than the the prize, you know, the the ribbon, the trophy, the the winning score for the game. Uh, performance uh, results is about process. Is there when you wake up in the morning? Is there a process that you have that's pretty much constant? The parts of the process are the same every day for you. Okay, hold on just hold on just a second. Who's the better kisser? The dog? Yeah, because look at Mike Dexter. He's got one heck of a good kiss. Just like... Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, there you go. I like that. Like that a lot. Yeah. So I didn't mean to digress. Oh, I, Sorry. I love that. I don't have, I don't set an alarm. You know, working for myself is wonderful. I, I don't have that pressure that I used to have of having to be up at a certain time. So I get to wake up naturally. And uh, I, I love, I, I don't feel like um, guilty like I might have in the past. So I made me feel guilty if I jump out of bed and, and do something right away. And now I just really Yeah. Um, and I, to the point where I can have coffee again. There were a few weeks where I wasn't, but, but typically non pregnancy, coffee every morning. I love coffee. Um, and uh, I'll have uh, breakfast, you know, and then I like to do at least 30 minutes of personal development every single day. Um, something's active. Yeah. But Thank you. 
morning, I'll burn incense at night. You know, I'm still having conquered anxiety. <laughs> That's still there for me. I think that a lot of very ambitious people do have this because we can get wrapped up in all there is to do with the big vision and we can get lost in what we're actually doing and the gratitude of that. And so um, I have these grounding things that I do um, that really bring me bring me into um, alignment with, with peace and then allow me to really be productive. Those are. I'm glad you said what you said because it's it's uh, it helps me to close out the show in a very positive, directed way about the premise of the show today, which was the power on the podium. And by, by I, if it hasn't been obvious to those listening, you've created your own podium. You've leveraged that podium. You're continuing to move that forward. Um, I'm. I want to ask you about your final words about motivating young women to get on the podium. Like you were saying, you would drive past the gym. And wouldn't take the step to get into the gym to be even having a chance at the podium. So what would you say, what are you going to say to young women that are listening, well, young or old, doesn't matter, about the first step they need to take to get on the podium so that you can mo- motivate them with your thoughts about that? The first step is exploring why you want to be there in the first place. You know, really thinking why is this important to me. And Answers are more fear based. It's so funny, we just jumped into a, a really great training uh, this this week actually with your pet um, about the communication of the subconscious mind. But a lot of our goals are either fear based, we're either moving toward them or away from them. And the language in how we're saying our goals, like, why do you want to go to the gym? If the gym is, is what about your kids to do, why do you want to go? Is it because you don't like your body? Is it, you know, I feel like I'm fat and I want to change? Or is it, um, I, I want to live longer. I want to feel better. You know, it's like the different language that we use. Is your goal fear-based or is it um, inspiration-based? Is it empowered? And exploring where your goal is at is first and foremost, is this a goal that you should really have? You know, because sometimes I think our resistance can come from our body telling us this is the right path. Yeah. You know, so we Well, it can be, it can be I want to thank you again for taking the time. I, I know I, I caught you off guard a little bit impromptu, so I'm so grateful for you being part of the day today with me. Um, I want to make sure this isn't the last time. Uh, you have uh, great things to say and, um, and, and images that come from real, genuine places, and I want to reproduce that for all the young women out there. Uh, you're listening to 360 Performance Talk. I'm your host, Lowell Whiteman. This is on KUHSDenver.com every Friday, don't forget, at 11 a.m. until noon. We're here with Crystal Rose Harvey. Just a, a, a delight. Uh, young lady, congratulations again on the pregnancy. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, look forward to seeing that, uh, that new addition to your family in the near future. Have a great day today, would you? It's a pleasure. Thanks so much, Lowell. Take care. All right, so everybody that's on my Ustream feed, we're going to be dropped off the uh, the Facebook feed. Um, we're posting that. Um, thank you for being tolerant through the, the changes we had today. That was awesome for helping me out with that. Um, so we're going to say goodbye for today and wish you all the very best. Have a great day today. Come on.